What game is a perfect 10 tenths in your book? Starcraft. Must have spent well over 1000 hours on that game. You must construct additional pylons. Hashtag additional supply depots required. I still think Terraria is a masterpiece. I have 500 hours unmodded, am still not bored with it. Warcraft 3. Solid campaign, awesome multiplayer, still being played all these years later. But most importantly, had a map editor that allowed modders to create games that would result in Dota 2, League of Legends, Auto Battlers, Tower Defenses, Plants vs Zombies and so much more. No other game in history has had such a long-lasting impact on online multiplayer. Battle.net on Warcraft 3 back in the day was the shit. The variety of the maps available was insane. My favorites were Footman Wars and Siege of Helm's Deep. Factorio. The factory must grow. This game is the best argument for supporting early access games. I was happy with the content Factorio had in 2016 when I bought it, and the developers have relentlessly continued improving it and adding amazing new features with a dedication to bug fixing and community interaction that you'd never see in most AAA devs. We don't deserve Wu Bay. Greater than this game is the best argument for supporting early access games I'd like to also throw Kerbal Space Program into that bucket. Kotor must be on this list. Kotor 1 and 2 were the first RPGs I played as a kid and they will remain some of my faves forever. The combat were great, the stories were great, the characters were great, and I'm glad fans managed to patch things back into the sequel to help make it even better. Crying shame we'll never get a third one. Super Mario Bros. 3, Tetris, I have literally lost entire days to Tengen Tetris. Honestly can't believe Tetris is so far down. Soul Reaver, it had an amazing story, cool puzzle mechanics, tons of secret areas and powers, cool boss mechanics and an amazing villain. Baldur's Gate, the game that got me into RPGs. Brilliant story, cool characters and interesting world and lore. More recent one, Bloodborne, got me into the Soulsborne games. Great story and a captivating lore, amazing world and brilliant boss fights, that punish mistakes and reward learning and improvement. You must gather your party before venturing forth, Insertus, Pulka, Imperio. Party gain 6 XP party gain 6 XP party gain 6 XP party gain 6 XP party gain 6 XP. Donkey Kong Country, and Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy Kong's Quest. It's actually Diddy's Conquest, and I only say this because it took me years to realize and understand the pun. Little late but, Bastion. The kid commented too late on this thread to get any upvotes, but didn't mind. At least the truth was out there now. Someone would see it. Well I sure heard it in his voice. Super Metroid. The last Metroid is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. I can hear the keyboard clicking. No music. Just the typing of a keyboard. It gave suspense and loneliness to the opening that I'll never forget. Silent Hill 2. Brilliant, brilliant game, and it's a travesty that it's so hard to play it these days. The original PS2 version has basically been nuked from existence unless you pirate it or find a used copy, which can be pretty expensive depending on where you live. And the PS3 remake is worse in every way and also delisted on PSN, and I assume Xbox Live too. So, again, you either need to pirate it or look for a used copy. It's absolute bullshit, and I hate how Konami seem to despise Silent Hill in particular more than they do their other franchises. I don't understand this. That franchise is a license to print money, hey, we could use another 100 million dollars this quarter. Can we put up a PS4 remaster next week? Does Konami not like making money or something? So come to US Navy SEALs I know, I'm like the old guy in a nightclub R and edit, thanks for the awards. Here is, more https colon slash slash u to b slash fj 74 k 4 wu 3 u nostalgia for you. For the record, it was a great game, so come one as well, not just because of the nostalgia. Looking at you Sony. My brother and I still talk about how we dream they remake this game. The voice commands. The stealth. 
J love that game. Heroes of Might and Magic 3 Edit, the complete edition of the game can now be bought DRM free on GOG and this week it's 75% off HTTPS colon slash slash www.gog.com slash game slash heroes underscore of underscore might underscore and underscore magic underscore 3 underscore complete underscore edition. Didn't expect to see this here. My favorite game ever. Deus Ex it is the one game which I religiously do a full story run of every other year. It's a masterpiece of design. I'll never forget my first stealth takedown with the Jepton. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. Yes. Grove Isle did nothing wrong. Grove Isle is a fucking bro. Catlivania Sotn. Oh, you think you're done? Flip that shit upside down let's go. Divinity, Original Sin 2e is the closest to a 10 I've ever played. Some minor flaws in inventory management make it a near miss, but damn I love that game. The inability to die backpacks or label them is the only downside to me. Oh and Fort Joy. After playing Git for the 40th time it gets stale. Edit, I know mods exist, I use a bunch of them, I wouldn't credit the game for mods though. The game needs credit for its GM and built-in mod support though, Mass Effect 2. There probably are faults, but I can't think of any. Thank you for all the silver and stuff, smiley face. Scanning endlessly for Iridium put me to sleep. The rest is 11 tenths though. Easily made up for with one of the best lines in video game history, with the perfect delivery from ED. Probing Uranus. Hollow Knight edit, Silk Song hype. Everything about Hollow Knight is just so good. The beautiful atmosphere, graphics, music. Amazing storytelling and flawless gameplay. There are very few games I loved as much as this one. Fun fact, there are literally zero repeated rooms in that game. And the map is pretty fucking huge, all things considered. Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 are definitely among the most beautiful games ever. Mario games have always had great music, but man did they go all out in Galaxy 1. Melty Monsters Galaxy. N-U-T-S. Shadow of the Colossus. Stardew Valley. I picked it up to see what all my friends were talking about, started playing, apparently blacked out, and woke up with 80 hours logged. Incredible. I loved it. It got me going outside to water my plants every day IRL and I'd get mildly distressed if I didn't have enough time, they won't grow if I don't water them every day. GTA SA I can turn off the minimap and still make it to the end of the game, that's how many time I've played this game. You could rob houses, set them on fire, play pool and arcade games, learn martial arts, get CJ in shape, or get him fat. Not to mention all the gang stuff which was also cool. Honestly, that game had so much packed into it that it's easily one of my favorites. Edit, thank you kind stranger for my first Reddit gold. I wish they would just remaster this game and release it on PS4 and Xbox One. Correction, I effectively mean a remake of the game. Same game, storyline, characters and even use the same voice actors. Just redo the graphics to their like GTA 5 graphics. And give it an online. Follow the Disney model. We'll lap it up, Mountain Blade, Warband. Even if there are certain aspects you don't like or need polish, you can almost always find a mod to help. What makes it great is how the game never changes, but you must change the way you play it. Starting out, you're a greenhorn that just has to stay alive as you improve your skills and obtain better equipment by helping villagers and doing other tasks. You spend more time running away than fighting. After you get some experience, you gather some warriors and go after small bands of thieves and outlaws. After you get better, join other war bands fighting armies and taking castles. All the while, you have to make friends with other lords. When it becomes your turn to be a landholder, you have to develop and defend your property. When the martial title is bestowed upon you, you have to decide which castles and towns to attack, all the while keeping other lords in line. When you go it on your own, 
you have to defend yourself from other rulers and figure out how to keep your own lords happy so they help you and not abandon you. Damn. Now I want to start a new game. Also considering how many mechanics and design philosophies in the game would be considered unorthodox like the example you gave. Also things like terrain affecting movement speed of the player and non-player characters, no written linear story in an RPG instead replaced completely by a sandbox, and the hybrid genre the game encapsulates being a RPG, strategy, sandbox, sim just to name a few examples. There is really nothing like it outside of a few ripoffs here and there. But let's be honest with each other about why we really play this game so much. It's the computer melting graphics. R slash O2. I'm waiting so eagerly for O4. O2 Definitive Edition. Rim World You Can Harvest Organs. My favorite memory of that game is when after a fight I noticed one of my guys was bleeding. They had been shot in the leg and it needed to be amputated. So I put them under anesthesia, amputated and gave them a wooden leg. A couple days later I noticed they were bleeding again, did something happen in the meantime that I didn't see, like a rabid animal attack? No, I amputated the wrong leg. I have never heard of this game before but I just laughed out loud. Half-Life 2 This game changed my life forever. Dungeons and Dragons. It is, but if your DM is bad it can be shit. Good thing I'm the DM then. Pokemon Heart Gold slash Soul Silver. Fuck that mill tank toe. Catch a drowsy next to the daycare and trade it from a shop in Goldenrod. That stupid cow goes down to a karate chop or two. 